Meshtastic and MeshCore are two most popular systems to build independent, distributed and open mesh networks. You know, for emergency situation or just to have fun, as it can be a pretty cool hobby. At the moment, there is quite a lot of friction on the topic, which one is better? who is switching to what and why something work differently. Like always, answering a question which one is better without first stating what better means is quite, well, pointless. For some, better might mean higher bandwidth, for some longer range, and for some just might prefer one logo over the another. You know, we won't discuss it to date. I don't have time for such drama. Instead, let's talk about similarities and the differences between both systems. Both Mesh Testing and Mesh Core are open source projects focused on creating off the grid mesh networks using LoRa, long range technology, enabling low power, long distance, wireless communication. If you don't know what LoRa is, I have a separate video on this topic and it should be linked somewhere here. Both Mesh Testing and Mesh Core utilize mesh networking principles, hence the name, where devices, let's call them nodes, rely messages to extend network coverage beyond direct line of sight. Both systems support encrypted communication to ensure privacy and security of the transmitted data and operate primarily on the license-free sub-gigahertz radio bands. 433 and 868 or 915 MHz, depending on region. And this makes them accessible without a special radio licenses. They support a range of common LoRa hardware platforms, including popular development boards and dedicated devices, allowing flexibility in device choice. Functionally, both aim to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer messaging in environments without cellular or Wi-Fi infrastructures, such as hiking, emergency response, or community networks. And both have companion mobile applications to manage devices and send messages. As you can see, both Mesh Testing and Mesh Core functionally take the same niche and solve the same problems in a similar way. Also, the fact that both rely on the same radio technology LoRa and hardware means that the radio transmission layer and ultimately aspects like range and transmission speeds are basically the same. After all, you can't request more bandwidth via software than hardware allows for. But of course, they differ quite a lot in other aspects, mainly in the design choices. Probably the biggest difference between both platforms is how the network is built. In case of MeshTastic, the basic building block for the mesh are client devices. When you flash MeshTastic, the device becomes a client by default. Clients can be used to send and receive messages, plus they will relay packets from other devices. Client is both an end-user device and element of the infrastructure. It's a true mesh approach by design. Network will organize itself ad hoc if only enough end-user devices are within range of each other or not. Depends. You and your buddies hiking in the mountains will create an independent network out of the box. In case of mesh core, engineers took a different approach. Devices are divided in two separate categories. Repeaters and companions. Repeaters are meant to be stationary elements of infrastructure. By the way, they don't have to. Companions, on the other hand, do not participate in routing. You and your buddy in mountains will be able to send messages to each other peer-to-peer, -peer, but others will not be able to use your devices to extend the network. It won't go outside of the peer-to-peer -peer mode without repeaters. Mesh core network is not self-organizing and requires at least a basic planning. Hop limit. 
It's a number of times packet can be retransmitted in each branch of the mesh. It's not the same as the number of packets will be retransmitted in total though. There is a subtle but important difference between those two. For Meshtastic, the max is 7 hops. For the mesh core, it's max 64 hops. However, it's changing since Meshtastic introduced recently a zero hop routing, which adds planning element to the network. In theory, with zero hop routing, it's possible to build meshtastic links hundreds of miles wide. Another difference is telemetry and general channel ingestion. Up to recent versions, all meshtastic nodes came with telemetry enabled. There is nothing wrong with having telemetry when needed, but when all the nodes try to send telemetry even when nobody needs it, it creates a lot of unnecessary necessary traffic. Traffic that generally slow LoRa radios have problem transferring and limited bandwidth. Mesh call from start is more conservative in terms of telemetry usage. Thus, more bandwidth can be used for useful traffic. Like I mentioned, the latest version of Meshtastic has telemetry disabled by default, so it's changing it, kind of going in the same direction Mesh core used from the beginning. And that's, believe it or not, a real main differences between mesh testing and mesh cores. Of course, apps look different. Projects support different LoRa boards. And in some scenarios, one behaves better and the other behaves worse. Still, the biggest fundamental difference is each project's approach to network architecture. Meshtastic prioritizes ad hoc auto organizing network when default device type client is both used as the end user device but also helps with routing and to rely packets within mesh. At the same time, mesh core prioritizes explicit network architecture with strategically placed repeaters as companion devices do not rely packets within the network. Here is the next video you should watch and you will find some useful links and other information in the description of this video. In the meantime, this was the Hacker University. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy hacking!